I have been doing databases and data infrastructure for more than 17 years. I spent almost six years at Uber and I was head of storage infrastructure there. We built our own distributed database called DocStore. We had built our own global replication service to replicate the data globally. And then eventing framework to working at scale had its own challenges and then running a platform with a, like critical database platform for a company like Uber it has, you know, has its own unique challenges and learning opportunity. I left Uber in uh, in 2021, and with two of my colleagues from Uber, we started Tigris in December 2021. Four characteristics of a database around, you know, security, high availability, performance, scalability that have to be there. We spent a year and a half, and I would say that we that's a record time to build a database. So the first commit we did was uh, in the open source repository with the Apache 2 license. And that's how we have been working. Everything that we have done is in the open. Everything that we have done is available free to use uh, as open source. A majority of the development initially was driven by us. And now we are able to provide better support to open source contributors. And, you know, we have started to see, see those contributions uh, come in over the last month or so since we did the launch. Definitely great period. I'm very excited about the production, you know, workload, about production traffic. And uh, it's, it's an amazing, you know, milestone uh, to hit. We have a modern cloud native architecture. We have a disaggregated architecture where storage and compute is disaggregated. And that is why we are more efficient, more scalable as compared to DynamoDB and MongoDB. Actually, our users tell us that it's, you know, three times faster to get started with Tigris as compared to MongoDB. We tend to think that open source is free, uh, but if open source were free, then how would people make a living out of it? Like, you know, there has there has to be like a sustainable business that needs to be built around open source, right? So the way we are monetizing the product is by offering a hosted version of the product. What we did differently was that not only are we building the core product in open, but we also uh, worked on the orchestration platform layer simultaneously. The decision to do that was based on experience. So experience tells that this is something that has to be done. When we say that it's a serverless platform and that it makes developer experience really simple and easy to use, if we then ask the developer to deploy it themselves, then we are not really showcasing the simplicity of the platform, right? So from that perspective, it always made sense to make a hosted version available. And then from enterprise use case perspective, definitely uh, they do need an orchestration layer so that they can deploy it or they can use it as their internal platform. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks for, uh, for highlighting this. Very helpful. And uh, yeah, I think people will take note uh, how this approach makes more sense. And it's more demanding to ship uh, and to ship fast. Yeah, definitely more demanding. <laughs> <laughs> Twice the work, yeah. In terms of go-to-market, our strategy is mainly dependent on, you know, building awareness. Um, and that's done through marketing. Put it in front of the user. And that's what marketing is, essentially. But then when you put in front of the user and user, it's solving a problem for the user, the product needs to show that, that, you know, it's solving your problem. It has the right experience that you expect out of it. Absolutely. And, and for a developer tool uh, and infrastructure specifically, that's, that's just the, the, the only way that makes sense, I think, to see other people around you experimenting with the technology, using it uh, to, to drive awareness. And I actually saw on your Twitter earlier today, uh, how this uh, developer with a big following who does content uh, teased that. He will be using uh, Tigris in, in a future video. So I was actually curious to ask you, like, how, how did this uh, come about? Did, did you reach out? Did he reach out? Was it, how did this come about? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I reached out uh, because, you know, we have to build awareness and there are some amazing people like Jason who are helping the community, teaching how cool the, the technology is, the problem it's solving, how it is making database access used and storage simple and easy. You know, we have been... Uh, using the bounty program, open source contributions and making sure they're paid so that you what you're doing, you're actually, you know, you know, getting paid for it. Uh, to And that's the way to make open source sustainable, to not expect people to do things for free. Helps us to improve the product, helps us to get more people in, to contribute in ways or areas that we are not able to, right? And get a different perspective. Um, so it has been great for us. And I wish the same can be done about the content as well. Why not get the community involved? Provides a more structured approach to, you know, building out content and showcasing how a certain technology can be used. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and what I what I like specifically about this idea of you know 
content bounties, because the reward can be immediate, like even before building a big following and a big channel, that sort of like, I think, opens it up to more people giving it a try and, you know, exploring the talents. So we definitely got to, got to run this experiment. So yeah, thank you so much. Is there some additional advice or maybe a mistake to avoid from, from your experience so far that we can share with other founders? Um, um, mistake to avoid. Um, yeah, I think that uh, especially, you know, people coming from engineering background like myself, we tend to think a lot about uh, the architecture and engineering. And I think it's more important to think about the problem that is being solved. What problem I'm solving and why am I solving it? Who is my user going to be? Those are really important questions um, to ask. And not purely be feature driven, be you know value driven. What value am I bringing? And if I'm not able to answer a question about what value I'm bringing, then I should not be focusing on the feature. So that's you know that, that that's a matter of priority. But I think that this is something you know critical that needs to be thought upfront. We have to you know just remind ourselves that we have to adapt and do what is needed by the business. If the business uh, look, I never did marketing before. Uh, yes, I wrote blog posts in the past, but I never did marketing before. I never did sales calls with users before. I never did feedback calls with, you know, customers outside of the company, right? So this all new for me, but I really enjoy it to start up a company and, you know, and to be able to start a company with my friends, that was, that doubles the joy. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an amazing experience, a learning experience and, you know, being able to, you know, bring value. That's, that's all I want.